dear students this is our fifth lecture on medicinal chemistry and in the previous lecture we have been studying physiochemical properties and in the first lecture we have studied the basic concepts of medicinal chemistry whereas in the next three lectures uh, we have gone through the physicochemical properties like hydrogen bonding chelation bioisosterism surface activity and steric features of the drugs and in the present lecture we will discuss about redox potential and ionization now uh, you know before we uh, start with redox potential we know that oxidation reduction reaction are those reactions where the oxidation and reduction take place uh, in simultaneously and there is an electron transfer from one molecule to the other molecule and the process is that one molecule undergoes reduction and other molecule undergoes oxidation that is why these are also called as redox reactions <coughs> and redox potential is associated with the quantitative measurement that is uh, defined as a quantitative expression of the tendency of a compound that has to give or receive electrons so the ability of any compound to give the electrons or to receive the electrons is called as redox potential and this is uh, similar to acid base reactions where a transfer of proton from one atom to uh, in the one molecule to other atom in the other molecule takes place so only difference being that in acid base reactions it is transfer of a proton whereas in oxidation reduction reactions uh, this is an uh, electron transfer process the uh, redox potential uh, of the compounds of a certain type uh, therefore can be correlated with the observed biological activity because uh, uh, living organisms they uh, function at optimum redox potential range and this range varies with the organisms and this uh, correlation is applicable to all compounds of similar structure and physical properties so when the compounds will have similar structure and similar physical properties and that means reduction potential can also be correlated with the biological activity of that molecule now a uh, redox potential of a system uh, may be calculated quantitatively through this equation eh is equal to e10 minus uh, 0.06 by n where eh is redox potential of the system which is being studied and e01 is standard potential at a given ph in that system where we are uh, studying the redox potential and n is the number of electron which are uh, being transferred during the system however uh, practically uh, only few satisfactory uh, correlations have been observed and there are number of reasons why only uh, few uh, correlations have been observed in case of medicinal chemistry now uh, first reason is that uh, Uh, as we know that redox potential uh, this ap applies to a single reversible ionic equilibrium and if we compare this with the living system uh, then uh, there is no uh, single reversible ionic equilibrium which exists in the living system because in the living system uh, we are having continuous reactions and uh, these uh, reactions they take place simultane uh, simultaneously involving either oxidation of the ionic and non ionic character of reactions and some of these reactions may be reversible and others may be irreversible so therefore uh, we cannot uh, uh, 
think that uh, redox potential uh, will be satisfactorily correlated with the uh, living system basically then uh, uh, correlation between redox potential and biological activity therefore generally uh, holds good only for compounds uh, which are very similar in structure and physical properties and uh, in such type of uh, series the variation in the route of distribution and in steric factors uh, which might modify the redox system interaction would also be minimized now we take the example of say uh, riboflavin riboflavin uh, uh, is having this structure and uh, this is a redox system where uh, these uh, two carbon nitrogen double bonds uh, they can exist in a dihydroform also so uh, when uh, we give two electrons to this they will be converted into dihydroflavins and uh, the redox potential for this uh, conversion of riboflavin into dihydroriboflavin is uh, minus 0.185 volts now if i replace uh, these two methyl groups by two chloro groups then uh, we will obtain dichlororiboflavin and uh, when uh, the uh, redox potential was calculated was only 0 0.095 volts so the resulting uh, compound uh, which is uh, derived from riboflavin this although this is having similar structure but their redox pro uh, properties they are different so uh, and its antagonist properties uh, these are due to dichloro dihydroform and this is a weaker reducing uh, agent than the dihydroform of the riboflavin so <clears throat> it may be uh, absorbed at a specific receptor site but may not have a negative potential to carry out the biological reduction of riboflavin so although they have similar structure but this cannot serve the purpose of riboflavin uh, then uh, in 1960 reist uh, prepared some non-redox analogs of uh, riboflavin as you can see over here that uh, these were derived from dihydroriboflavin uh, if this nitrogen is replaced by carbon say methylene group or uh, this isopropylidene group so these two distinct uh, forms of dihydroriboflavin uh, they can be formed so these are nothing but analogs of riboflavin and uh, uh, although these they are derived from uh, dihydroriboflavin uh, but the redox enzyme system implying the riboflavin coenzyme utilizes both the oxidized and reduced form so therefore the analogs of either uh, one that is riboflavin or two dihydroriboflavin they are effective antagonists but uh, the uh, redox system is eliminated in these compounds completely now uh, the ionization and pk value uh, now there are two things about biological activity the biological activity of a drug results from ions if the biological activity intensifies with increase in degree of ionization and if the activity results from undissociated molecule then increase in degree of ionization of the drug will cause a decrease in its activity uh, therefore increase in ionization intensifies a drug's water solubility and decreases its liposolubility so these are the three factors uh, 
which will determine that whether the ionization energy uh, ionization of the drug molecule will increase the uh, biological activity or it will decrease the biological activity similarly whether the ionization will increase the solubility in water or fat that is liposolubility so uh, as we know that uh, most of the drugs they will cross cellular membranes in the undissociated form as intact molecules therefore uh, they will act in dissociated form as ions so passage of ion through cellular membrane is prevented because of these two factors so as we know that cellular membrane is made up of layers of electrically charged macromolecules like lipids, proteins and mucopolysaccharides. And if the drug is ionized then either it will attracted by it will be attracted by the cellular membrane or it will be repelled by the cellular membrane. And further the hydration of ions if our drug is uh, ionized then hydration of ion increases their volume and if volume increases it will be difficult for the drug to fuse through the pores of the cellular membrane. So uh, these two points uh, they go against the ionization of the drugs. Now uh, depending upon uh, whether the drugs they are acidic or basic or strongly basic or strongly acidic uh, we can use uh, these drugs for example if uh, weakly acidic drugs they are there then they are pre uh, predominantly unionized form at lower ph of the gastric fluid because uh, uh, at lower ph uh, they will not ionize and they are absorbed from the stomach as well as from the intestine. Similarly, if uh, we are having uh, very weak acidic drugs like uh, fentoin uh, and many barbiturates uh, whose pK value are greater than 7 in both the cases and they are essentially unionized at all pH values. Therefore, for these weak acidic drugs, transport is more rapid and independent of pH because when they are unionized, they can easily pass through the cellular membrane. Similarly, uh, most weak bases, they are poorly absorbed in the stomach uh, since they are present largely in the ionized form at low pH and uh, strong bases uh, where the pk value is between 5 and 11 uh, they show ph dependent absorption depending upon the ph if ph is high then they will be absorbed more if ph is low they they will be poorly absorbed similarly uh, if strong bases uh, such as uh, guanethidine this one where pk value is more than 11 uh, they are uh, ionized throughout the gastrointestinal tract and uh, therefore because they are uh, ionized that is why they are poorly absorbed in the tract. Now uh, the partially lipid nature of the cellular membranes uh, as we know uh, like stomach, uh, small intestine, mucosa, nervous tissue. This will facilitate the passage of drugs with high liposolubility because uh, like dissolved, like lipid nature uh, of the cellular membrane will uh, allow the drugs with high liposolubility to pass through them. So liposolubility uh, is affected by pH of the environmental medium and degree of dissociation that is pKa value. So degree of dissociation uh, uh, in case of an acid as given by henderson Hirschbach equation that pH, pH is equal to pKa plus log of 
ionized drug concentration divided by unionized drug concentration similarly in case of a base uh, ph is equal to pk plus log of unionized drug concentration divided by ionized drug concentration so uh, by this we can uh, calculate the degree of uh, dissociation of any acidic drug or basic drug and degree of uh, dissociation then will uh, give us uh, an idea about the liposolubility of that drug so uh, overall the biological activity of uh, certain acids and bases is uh, directly related to their degree of ionization so strong acids they have low pk value weak acids they will have high pk value strong base will have high pk value weak base will have low pk value so based on this the passage of these drugs will take place through the cellular membrane now this is an example that uh, in case of tetracycline compounds uh, we can see that there are three distinct activity constant in aqua solution of uh, acid salts uh, one moiety which is responsible uh, that is ammonium cation moiety for the acidic value uh, then second is this one tricarbonyl methane moiety and one third is phenol dicot and diketone moiety so uh, dissociation of uh, the tetracycline will be affected due to all these pk1 pk2 and pk3 values so uh, the approximate pk value for each of these group in the four commonly used tetracyclines uh, is given over here and you can see that pk1 value is uh, almost constant for all the four tetracyclines whereas pk2 uh, 7.7 7 in the unsubstituted tetracycline if it is uh, chloro tetracycline it is it decreases to 7.4 if it is uh, demi uh, cyclo tetracycline then 7.2 oxy tetracycline then 7.4 3 so depending upon the structure the pka2 value decreases then pk3 value is also uh, almost same but uh, only slightly different uh, from one another and it is highest for tetracycline 9.5 then for these two it is almost same and 9.1 for oxytetracycline so these are the references which have been used uh, for preparing this lecture. Thank you very much.